Hi guys, how's it going? It's good to see everyone again. Um, back for another video. So heads up guys, I've been trying to film this video like three times and I'm committed to getting this video out. So the first time I, I recorded it, it didn't even make it past editing. I, I ended up just scrapping the whole thing. I was like, this is terrible. I hate it. It's not coming out the way I want it to come out. The second one, I was up, I was editing it for, I don't know how long, like three hours, three hours. I'm going through this video and you think I would have realized the problems I saw. No, no. It wasn't until I had edited it, post, you know, downloaded it and posted it up on my channel. And then I listened to it again after it was posted. And all of a sudden I'm like listening to it again. And I'm like, Oh, I hate my delivery. I'm acting like this is a joke. I don't like how I don't like my delivery. My delivery is terrible. This is no, this is no, no, I don't like my delivery. This no, I thought I was where, how, how did I miss all this? And I just deleted the video and people were in the middle of watching it. So if you were one of those people watching the video last night, I'm sorry, but I hate my delivery last night. I hated it. I don't know how I, I, I don't know. I think I was so in it when I was editing that I didn't see <laughs> my actual delivery. It wasn't until I posted it and I just, for some reason it just all came through. And I was like, no, this is not, mm, no, this has to go. So here I am going to try it again. So the video I'm trying to make is discussing Thanksgiving, the history of Thanksgiving and how Thanksgiving sort of evolved into what it is now. And we're going to cover a lot of things. So we're going to go over a lot of them briefly and I may not get everything answered. And trust me, I, I was, for the past week, I would be asking a question, which would lead me to another question, which would lead me to another question. I feel like I just, I, I don't, it's like it would never end. <laughs> like, I feel like the, the research is just never ending. Like I'll never come to a, a conclusion in this. Like there, I always have more questions. So we're just going to go off of what I have now, which is a lot of information. I've been obsessed with this subject, just mind blown. Listen, I've known the history of America. I've known about the pilgrims coming over, colonizing, bringing disease and, and wiping out Native Americans. I know all about it. But I think there's something to be said when you actually dive deep and just look at certain events that happened before America became the United States, there's some really dark shit that has happened that is never discussed. And it's, it's frustrating because I never learned this stuff in school. And I feel, I feel lied to like, Honestly, I feel very lied to. I feel very betrayed. I feel like, why would you withhold this from us? Like, don't we deserve the truth? And I've been feeling this way about this holiday for quite a while, to be honest. I, as I, after I graduated high school and became an adult, I started seeing like, some serious problems with the holiday. And the first thing I noticed that I had a serious problem with, which doesn't have anything to do with pilgrims or Native Americans, what it has everything to do with for me was watching everyone on Thursday talk about how grateful they are. I'm so grateful for my family, my health, all my neighbors and my job. And you know, I'm so grateful, so grateful. November is gratitude month. I'm so grateful. And then the next day, Everyone's out at Walmart punching each other in the face for an Xbox. And I thought, I thought you were grateful. What, what are, what's this? What is this? This is weird. What, what are we doing? And I, even I would be like, honestly, if you look deep into the sales, like the, the, how, how companies come up with their sales, it's so um, predatory. 
<laughs> you guys, final sale. Get it now while supplies last. Like that, they do it on purpose. They know what they're doing and, and they're trying to make a buck off of us. But the reality is how much money are you really saving? And, and why is it the day after Thanksgiving? We'll get into all of that. It's just, it seems like it's just been fucked up, for lack of a better word. Now, I want to get out of the way right here, right now, which I regret not doing this to begin with, is I have no love for the colonists in this story. I have no respect for any of these people. And I have nothing but the, I want you all to know I have the most deepest sympathy and regret. And I feel very betrayed for not knowing this. I had to go and seek this out on my own, on my own time. How many people are doing stuff like this? How many of you are just going out and researching stuff and being like, oh shit, I didn't know that. Not many. And it makes me mad. I'm very angry that I found this out on my own. So I've got no love for the Puritans, the colonists. I no, no, it's shameful what they did. They should be ashamed of themselves. And I want to make sure that's clear from the word go, because I feel like it wasn't made clear. So without further ado, let's dive into this fucked up history. Okay, because it is, it's fucked up. And it gets a holiday. <laughs> but we're gonna get into all of that. Because it's a train wreck. I mean, Thanksgiving is a train wreck. I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it. Unpopular opinion. I love the food, love spending time with my family, mostly. <laughs> but shit's a train wreck, okay? Sorry, I'm sorry. Enjoy the holiday. I'm not telling you not to enjoy it. And I don't want you to feel guilty. I'm not putting this out there because I want people to feel guilty about celebrating or anything, but I want people to know what I learned I put in the work and I want it to at least go to a good cause. God, who freaking knows where to begin on this story? Seriously, I don't know where to begin. Very, on my last video, I insisted on calling them the separatists. I don't know if I was actually right to do that though. I think I might interchangeably use, I just might use whatever word I feel like. Separatists, Puritans, assholes. We're talking about the, the English, the Europeans, I mean, it was basically England and the Netherlands that we're referring to. And not so much, I don't know about the Netherlands, like they seem to be better. You know, some, some people came over on the Mayflower to escape religious persecution. That is all true. Yes, they definitely did that. But there's a little bit more to it than that. So like, first of all, and I want to apologize in advance if I mispronounce tribal names. I, I will try my best to pronounce it correctly, but I can't promise you that I will because I'm not that good at this stuff. I'm sorry. So I want to apologize in advance if I mispronounce any of these names. I'm sure I will. very frustrated with myself <laughs> because you guys don't know how much I've been practicing these names and then I start talking and <laughs> you guys don't even know how much time I spent practicing these names okay the Dutch and the English coming over to America was to increase wealth and broaden their influence and to escape religious persecution so but the English left England. Yeah, that's cute. that's a good sentence. So they originally went to the Netherlands. And then when they got to the Netherlands, it just kind of became overcrowded. Like there was a lot of them there and it was just getting a little cramped. And then funny story, 
their children were adapting to the the Dutch like they were they were adapting like kids were like oh okay so we're we're Dutch now so hey and the English were like oh no 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 mm -mm, this isn't gonna fly it's time for us to go I think we've overstayed our welcome here and then they decided to go to America where they can broaden their influence now <laughs> my favorite part of this whole story is I really thought that the the Mayflower was actually headed for New England and I found out that no the Mayflower was not headed to New England it was in fact headed to Virginia and they missed Virginia and I was like how very Christopher Columbus of you <laughs> good job like wait you landed and they landed in Cape Cod okay so here's the first part that is just weird to me they landed in Cape Cod which is a fair distance from Plymouth. If you've been to Plymouth and you've seen the rock and everyone knows that's not where they landed. We all know this. You go to Plymouth, someone's going to tell you, you know, the pilgrims didn't actually land here, right? And it's like, yeah, I know. But you know, you made this a tourist trap. So here I am. And you go out there and you look at the dumb rock that says 1620 on it. And you're like, oh, fancy but they didn't land here. And then you go across the street and buy a t-shirt that says Plymouth Rock because you fancy it now. It's weird, okay? And it's not even true. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is this fuckery? <laughs> Why do we sell this shit? It's not even true and we're like acting like it happened and then we make fun of people if they're actually confused by it. No, you're right to be confused. It's strange. Why do we make up this story and then make fun of people when they think it's real? I don't, is, but anyways, let's move on. So now you all know they didn't land in Plymouth. They landed out in Cape Cod. It was very JFK of them. Good for them. And then they discovered winters in New England. Woo! See, they were anticipating Virginia winters, which, oh, fun fact, something I didn't know, and I am permanently creeped out by the state of Virginia completely now from here on out. Virginia is named after Queen Elizabeth's virginity. Why? Why? Why are we naming things after someone's vir Virginia is for lovers. Ew! <laughs> cool story, bro. Oh God, I hate these guys. I hate them so much. They eventually made their way over to Plymouth, eventually, and they discovered the, the Wapanoa tribe. Oh shit, did I say that right? Go easy on me, please. Okay, so they were introduced to the Wapanoa tribe who can, you know, had control over basically the Plymouth area a lot of Massachusetts too. It looks like a pretty fair amount of Massachusetts was controlled by the Wapanoas. So there's, there's different tribes in New England. Um, Wapanoas won, the Narragansetts, Narragansetts are another, um, and the Pequot tribe. In 1621, like the, the first Thanksgiving was held between the Wapanoa tribe with Squanto. I had to, oh, I can't remember his actual name. I will insert it because I, that's not his actual name. It's, it, so they, they celebrated, they had like a three day feast, but it was more of the Wapanoas were very um, distrustful of the, the new colonists. Wapanoa tribe, some said, let's make an alliance with the Narragansetts to get rid of the English. They've been raiding our coast for decades, enslaving, and they can't be trusted. And a lot of people disagreed with um, having an alliance with the English too as a way to you know, know what's going on because they weren't trusting, like the tribes were not trusting the white people. Okay, so, and why weren't they trusting them? Well, 
I mean, you probably know some of the reasons. Let's talk about the main one. Well, yeah, the main one. Uh, all the diseases that were introduced to the tribes by, by the colonists. So they, they brought over a host of wonderful diseases and they spread them around and it wiped out like 90% of the population, 75 to 90% of the population was wiped out from disease alone. Things like smallpox, typhus, chickenpox, yellow fever, measles, all the good ones, you know? And and the, the natives didn't have any immunity to these diseases. They'd never experienced these diseases, so they, they wiped them out. It, it was horrible. What, how awful, you know? And then you, and like something like 20,000 people were coming from Europe to New England, basically, 20,000 people. So imagine just watching your people die from disease and then you see ships just coming and coming and you're like, oh, terrific. This is just great, perfect. And not only that, but they're also enslaving. And when all this was going on, the most powerful tribe was actually the Pequot tribe. And they controlled, they basically lived in Connecticut and they, um, I wrote it down. Pequot tribe was the most powerful tribe at the time. They had the most control over the fur trading, which was very, a very big thing in that time, especially in New England in the winter, like furs. Yeah, you want those. And they would do trading. And there's also a form of currency that was the Pequots had, which made them very wealthy, which was called wampum. And they were these shell beads um, made of conch and another shell that I'm forgetting and it was a form of currency and this was traded between tribes now there was rivalries between the Pequots the Narragansetts and the Mohicans because of the fact that the Pequots controlled most of the fur trade and had most of the wampums there was a little bit of bad blood so there would be conflicts that would break out between tribes and things would get worked out and so forth and so forth. But for the most part, I, from what I've gathered from the research I've found, um, it looks like these conflicts break out, but then it kind of settles down and people are just kind of a little salty about it. I don't know. It, it's hard to say, but something i found like the the colonists i think were very threatened by the peacocks because they had so much power over this region and and <laughs> they can't have that because let's be honest here the the puritans felt like the native americans were godless people they didn't have religion they they did crazy ass things like there was harmony between the sexes, like women were actually respected and actually held positions of power and men actually took what women said seriously. And women had a role in the tribe, in the community. It was an important role. Women had important roles. Oh, and they didn't wear a lot of clothing either, which was really weird to the the native, you know, the the Puritans. They were like, "Oh my God, these people have no clothes on. I can't control my erection." And and that alone made them think like, "Oh, they're godless because they walk around topless," which like no one's thinking that except you, you dirty old pervert. If there's this balance of power between both genders and both genders are equally respected, then I guess you can walk around topless and it's not gonna be an issue. Just saying. I'm sure that's not always the case. I'm sure there's a few bad apples, but I'm just saying for the most part, you know. So these body shaming fucking weirdo colonists, you know, had problems with that. Like, oh, they get all the fur. Their women are naked, like they have no God. Ew. 
you know, and, and then they, and on top of all this, the thing that really pissed me right the fuck off was how they felt like all these natives dying from the plagues that they brought over was like God's will. Well, you, what? <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. Leave God out of that one. You know what I mean? <laughs> you leave God alone. Okay. No. No, this is not God's will. This is you are gross and you have gross illnesses and you brought them over. And it was just like, so here they are getting everyone sick. Everyone's violently ill and dying and they're salty because the Pequots have all the good fur. And I'm sure the Pequots are well aware there's a problem and Things are just not going very well for anybody, <laughs> um, but especially the tribes. So, like I said, there was conflict between the, the Pequots, the Narragansetts, and the Mohicans. And the Pequots are trying to maintain um, their political and economic dominance over the region as well through this whole thing. But... Um, the colonists are building alliances with other tribes to take down the Pequots, which is very unfortunate. So some of the key players in this, in this um, attack are first and foremost, we have Captain, whoa, where did it go? Captain John Mason and uh, Captain John Unhill, basically the two leaders of this massacre that is about to take place. Um, so Captain John Mason had um, had recruited some Narragansetts and some Mohicans and about 90 other men. And John Underhill had 20 men and, and a scattering of Narragansetts and um, Mohicans as well and they they were all going to go down to the Pequot fort it was considered a fort at the time it was literally I will insert a picture but it's literally an enclosure and the residence is inside and then there's like a fence around protecting the people inside that's where the Pequots lived. I don't think all of them lived there, but I think there was a large population there, but I don't, because they, I think they were scattered throughout the region, but for the most part, this is where most of them lived. So keep that in mind. So during, and the conflict itself goes from 1634 to 1638. So it's years after this first Thanksgiving that is mentioned. Um, but this whole conflict starts, so there, there's minor fights and scuffles and stuff. And um, like the Pequots actually, uh, let's see, they attack a colonial village, kill six men and three women. And then there was a trader that, uh, like a fur trader, John Oldman, he was murdered and his trading ship was looted by the Peacocks. So this is pissing every, this is pissing the white people off big time. Like, how dare you disrespect us? Blah, blah, blah. It, this means war. So, so they decide in the middle of the night. So around, so the straw that broke the camel's back was on the 23rd of April in 1637. And that was the attack on, on the, um, Weathersfield village where the, the six men and three women were killed. Be prior to that was the uh, the fur trader who was killed and his ship was looted. Nobody's happy about this. And so they're going to teach the Pequots a lesson. Oh, do they ever. So, so on May 26, 1637, in the middle of the night, John um, Mason and Underhill, they they head down to the Pequot tribe and they, they sneak in sort of through other means, like through other tribes, they sneak through. And basically what happens is 
a lot of people stand around the perimeter of the fort and then John, the Johns go in and lead the attack. So it starts out with guns and um, like basically hand-to-hand -hand combat with the Pequots. And John Mason decides halfway through like, oh my God, this is taking a ridiculously long time. Like hand-to-hand -hand combat is not a good idea for this amount of people. And so he decides that he's gonna take it up, kick it up a notch here. And um, he instructs his um, army to burn the village, the, the fort to the ground with men, women, children, elderly inside the village. And it was something like, the number varies, it's between 400 and 700 people were were massacred on this night. So it's a large number. It's, it's a large amount of the tribe. Um, now, you might be wondering, because I was wondering myself, like how did the Mohicans and the Narragansetts feel about when they saw what was happening? Like I, I, I feel like they were probably deceived and and played by the, the, the colonists. Because like I said, like if you, if you read about um, the Wama, the Wapanoa tribe not trusting the colonists, then you have to wonder if other tribes felt the same way. And I would think that they would, but like I said, I can't find any real information on um, concrete and I've looked like how, because I really wanted to know is the one thing I really wanted to know is, you know, when this was all happening, how did the, the Mohicans and the Narragansetts feel witnessing this genocide. I mean, it had to be traumatizing. Can you imagine? Oh, God. So, and it's described in like, yay, sort of way between the people who were there and the people who were doing the massacring. They were like, yay, us. Yay, we got control. That's how they saw it. Like, we're gonna take them out, we're gonna annihilate them, and then we will have control over this land. And it's awful. Like, imagine being in this fort and seeing your house burning down and and watching people escape and so the thing is is if you try to escape there's only a few you know exits that you can escape through if you try to escape there's someone waiting outside and they're going to kill you so you have two choices you can either try to escape and be murdered or stay and be burned to death you decide which would you choose i i don't know what i would choose I can't imagine what I would choose. How horrible. Can you imagine being a child? I mean, just take a moment and imagine what that would be like for a child. Imagine a five-year-old child has to decide whether or not to burn to death or to try to escape and be murdered by white people or your neighboring rival tribe. I can't imagine. I can't even imagine. Now here's the thing that's the kicker for me. It's just the, uh, so the mayor or the governor of the Plymouth Colony, William Bradford declared May 26, a day of Thanksgiving because all the colonists came back safely. Like, Let's express our gratitude for the colonists coming back safely from this genocide. Good job, well done. You guys get a holiday. You murdered children. You murdered elderly people. You murdered women. You murdered, you annihilated a tribe and you get a holiday from the governor of Plymouth? Really? Gross, gross. Here's the thing about Thanksgiving too is, 
after all this was said and, and trust me there's there was another battle that came later with the the um Wampanoa tribe and it was called um oh what was it called it was like King James's war king something and it it wasn't a white person the King James was um one of the chiefs of the tribe and I won't even go there with that one so so like I said, there is very conflicting evidence as to what we're referring to when we, we say the first Thanksgiving. But here's the part where it gets why I think this holiday is weird. Okay, so we know all this. We know that the pilgrims came over on the Mayflower. They landed in wherever they landed. We were told Plymouth. They landed on some rock. Why we were told this, I don't know. And they shared a meal with the tribes and everyone sat around and sang kumbaya and all is well and we are like oh yeah we'll all share the land but did we but we didn't do that that's not what happened at all we we stormed in we brought disease we wiped out a population of people pretty much to bare bones and then we decided to go in and set fire to an enormous group of people because they had the best furs. Make it make sense. And then they go home and they get a holiday. We're gonna fast forward to George Washington constitution sign he's doing his president thing he's saying how slavery sucks slavery sucks but he has slaves yay so many problematic guys in history <laughs> so many people with problems in history and he declares something like the end of december to be thanksgiving but it's not like a i don't know it's like some declaration or something I, it, and then so then we're gonna fast forward again to 1863, Abe Lincoln's president, and he decides to um, declare the last Thursday of November to be Thanksgiving in honor of the Union Army winning at Gettysburg. Okay, so this is where I had questions, guys. This is where I had questions. I was like, okay, so Lincoln declared it a holiday and it's been a holiday ever since. And he declared it because the Union Army won Gettysburg. Okay, no, that's cool. No, that's fine. But what, how did we get the pilgrims from Gettysburg? See, that's the part I was confused by. How do we get pilgrims from Gettysburg? Because if, if we left it with Lincoln, then shouldn't we be giving thanks to the Union Army for winning at Gettysburg? That's what I thought. I can't be the only one. Well, I had to dig to find my fucking answer. <laughs> I felt like it was a simple question and I could not find an answer anywhere. And I finally found it. Thank you, Smithsonian, by the way, always got my back. So by the late 19th century, so after the Civil War, during the reconstruction period, there was anxiety about an influx of Jews and Catholics coming into the United States. God forbid, Jews and Catholics. Oh, no, <laughs> not that. How awful for you. And the Protestants wanted to assert authority. And so they created this story about the pilgrims. And it was kind of a twofer. Then New Englanders could feel good about their past. Like they didn't have to think about the horrible things that happened. They could just make it be some cute little story about how we all got together one night and had dinner together. Yay! And we're just gonna go with that. So some Protestants during the reconstruction, I want to know which Protestants. I can't imagine. Okay, K. If I had to guess, they decided to, I don't know, whitewash it. So there's my answer. I got my answer as to why we don't celebrate Thanksgiving as the day 
the Union Army won at Gettysburg because honestly, I felt like that's what it should have been. Okay, but then it gets even better. It gets even better. So we're gonna fast forward some more. We're gonna fast forward a little bit further to uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Now he's president, he's doing his thing. And they're, you know, America's struggling through a depression, right? Whew, times are tough. Roosevelt's like, hey, I got an idea. Let's push back Thanksgiving to the third Thursday of the month in November so we can extend the holiday season. So then businesses can make more money. Boom. So Roosevelt kind of commercialized it and kind of saw, you know, hey, Christmas is profitable. We all know this. We Who's been to Walmart on Black Friday? Well, I haven't been to Walmart on Black Friday. So I always have to laugh because I've known about this part for a while. I've known about Roosevelt and, you know, Black Friday because I wanted to know what the hell is up with Black Friday anyways. I had to know. Um, so Roosevelt essentially kind of commercialized the holidays. So whenever someone's talking about how commercialized the holidays are, I think I laugh, I'm, I chuckle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the design. That's its design. It's designed that way. So I always thought Black Friday meant it was the day that businesses went from red to black. But I found out that's false too. It actually comes from in the 1960s, the Pittsburgh police reported the, the large droves of people coming into the city on the Friday after Thanksgiving to buy shit as Black Friday. And there you have it. And I just, I think of this like weird hodgepodge of, of collection of shit. And like, if we could have left it with Lincoln as yay, yay, Gettysburg. Cool. I'd celebrate that. I mean, that was a, that was a good victory for us, you know? Woohoo. <laughs> Union. Union strong. <laughs> it was though. That was a good victory for the United States. Gettysburg was it. I want to go to Gettysburg still. So like, I'm still one day I'm going to get there. Now that I've permanently ruined Thanksgiving for you, I'm sorry. So what am I going to do with the holiday now? Do I want to just continue and pretend like nothing ever happened? Not really. Am I interested in celebrating anymore? Yeah, I am. I still want to. But can I make it my own holiday? And yeah, maybe. And then I found out through my research that the Wapanoa tribe in 1970 established Thanksgiving as a national day of mourning. And I was like, tell me more. They gather at Plymouth Rock and I was like, I'm listening. And they, they perform like a ceremony or it's like a protest, like a peaceful protest. I'm like, I love a protest. I'll see you next year. So I, I don't know, don't be surprised if you see me like next year or the year after chilling in Plymouth and being like, girl, what are you doing? I thought you hated Plymouth. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, <laughs> don't worry. <gasps> I'm in good company. <laughs> I'm with the original landowners. <laughs> I want to do like a series on atrocities committed to First Nations because my first real... I've known about a lot of atrocities, trust me. I, I, I am aware of many atrocities. But I think the one that really just pissed me right the fuck off is when I was um, researching my trip to South Dakota and I already knew I wasn't gonna go to Mount Rushmore. The president's face is blasted into a side of a mountain. That's just weird. It's kind of weird. And then I found out the story behind Mount Rushmore and I was like, I knew it. I knew I had a problem with this. I feel like I have such a, a natural curiousness towards history and all things that involve history and especially the history of the United States that I don't know how I missed this one, to be honest. So 
This frustration could lie solely on me, but I know I never learned this in school. Everyone have a good Thanksgiving and um, try not to punch anyone in the face on Friday and be nice to retail workers, okay? They are taking time away from their friends, their family to wait on you. So please be nice. I hope that you're actually watching this video <laughs> because if you are, it means it was okay for me. I, I finally found it acceptable. All right. So with that, have a good night. Bye.